Grigorio 3.5 is here with a massive list of improvements, many of which came from Grigorio 4's development. You now have a new real-time pathfinding system that works with moving obstacles. The new twin system makes twin animation much more flexible with less code, and you can now develop games on Android devices thanks to the Android port of the Godot editor. This can give millions of people worldwide access to game development. The list goes on. There's a lot more to look at, like the new Okluda shape polygon and physics interpolation for 3D. This video is sponsored by ourselves. If you want to become a better game developer with Godot, you'll love our courses. If you're a beginner, Learn to Code from Zero is perfect for you. It'll teach you everything you need to make your own games. If you're experienced already, we made Godot Node Essentials for you. It's the largest knowledge base for Godot with over 100 demos and dozens of guides. Godot's real-time navigation system was always a bit limited. Your AIs could only walk around a fixed level and didn't take moving obstacles into account. Godot 4 got a brand new navigation system to address this limitation and it's now available in Godot 3.5. You can now create navigation obstacle nodes your agents can detect and avoid. It works both in 2D and 3D. There has always been an annoying issue with 3D and Godot. When you first spawn particles on displayed 3D models, their materials had first to get compiled, causing short freezes. To work around that, we would create instances of all the particles and model at the start of a level to force their shaders to compile right after loading. While this is fixed in Godot 4, the developers are trying to address the issue in Godot 3 as well. Godot 3.5 introduces asynchronous shader compilation and a shader cache. Depending on the project and platform, it can get rid of freezes due to shader compilation happening during gameplay. In our tests, it can really help in large 3D scenes, but it can also cause stutters in other cases, so you'll need to adjust the settings to your project. To do so, go to the Project Settings, Rendering, GLES 3. Turning the max simultaneous compiles down to 1 on desktop can help if you're experiencing big slowdowns. Node paths are often a headache as your project grows, especially when working on user interface. They can get very long and every time you move a node in your scene, you have to go change them. Some of us started to use the find node function for convenience. This function can find a node by name at runtime at the cost of performance. Godot 3.5 introduces scene unique names. With this feature, you can mark individual nodes you need to access in your scripts and get them with the person sign. You can move them anywhere in the scene without changing your script. Everything will just keep working. Until now, rendering text in 3D required making a label in a viewport and displaying that on a 3D model. Not anymore. Just create a label 3D node, type your text, and you're done. There's also a new text mesh resource that allows you to draw extruded text. You can now draw 2D gradients with the new Gradient Texture 2D resource. You can use it to prototype backgrounds, to overlay on top of some textures for some haze, and it's also useful for masking and color sampling in shaders. A really major improvement is that the editor now supports Android. Right now, you still need to connect a keyboard and mouse to use it, but there's work planned to better support touch and virtual keyboards. Still, it could make game development accessible to the millions of people who use affordable Android tablets all around the world. It could also be great for classrooms and if you want to code on the go with a really lightweight setup. Godot 3.4 added new features to optimize 3D rendering using portals and spheres that hide geometry. This release adds the ability to use a shape to control occluded geometry better. Create an occluded node, give it a polygon shape, draw the shape, and place it wherever you want to hide geometry. You can now use physics interpolation in 3D. A problem with physics updates is that they are limited. Physics calculations are heavy, so we rarely go beyond 60 physics frames per second. But then, physics objects do not move as often as others, especially when you lower the physics update rate, you start to get jitters. Physics interpolation moves objects between physics updates without making extra calculations, allowing you to smooth out motion. To turn on this feature, go to the Project Settings, Physics, Common, Physics Interpolation. 2D support will come in a future version. 
In Godot, you can inherit scenes just like scripts. This allows you to reuse the same structure across multiple game entities and save time. In practice, it had some quirks when you try to reset values from the inherited scenes or change properties on the parent. This now works much more consistently and you can pin values in child scenes to ensure they override the parent and stay like this. The UI theme system now supports variations. You can use that to make something like a base button, a confirmation button, and a cancel button. The styles then become accessible throughout your project. The great thing is that it works with any control node. There is a new container that will align UI nodes in flowing rows or columns. You could say it's a bit like Flexbox on the web, but adapted to Godot's system. One thing we do a lot in Godot is creating unready variables to store references to nodes. You can now control click and drag a node onto the script editor to instantly create the corresponding variable. You can now change icons alignment on buttons, which is a small but a much welcome improvement. And we wrap up with the new tween system. You can now create tween animations from anywhere without adding tween nodes. To do so, use the new create tween function from your scripts. The new way to create tweens is more intuitive and flexible. You can chain function calls to change the animation settings and reuse those settings for multiple animations. In Godot 3, this new system exists in parallel to the tween node. That way, nothing breaks in your existing projects. You can find all the demos in this video on our GitHub. You'll find a link in the description. Godot is getting more polished and pleasant to use with each update. Now's a great time to learn and use it, especially with the pace at which it keeps growing. If you want to learn Godot and support our work, we have great courses for you. If you have little experience, learn to code from zero with Godot will teach you everything you need to make games from zero. If you have programming experience, Godot Node Essentials is a goldmine. It's the largest knowledge base for Godot's nodes with over 100 demos and dozens of guides. You'll find the links to both courses in the description below. With that, be creative, have fun, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.